So we've just seen um, a theorem that shows that in a repeated game, if we repeat stage Nash, then we get a state uh, a Nash for the the whole the whole game. But one of the main reasons um, we repeated games are studied is because we can get a different outcome out of this complex behavior, complex set of rules. So if I if I write down our game again, zero six one one seven five and b equals zero three one one zero one and um, remember i'm using uh, r1 r2 and c1 c2 and c3 as my my actions and um what we're going to look at is a strategy for each player so it's a pair of strategies that's not the sequence of stage nash um, Recalling the the stage Nash are, are um oh, that should be a that, that is a two. Um the stage Nash are just immediately identified by um by looking at best responses and we see that uh this and and this are our stage Nash. Um now let's consider the following strategy. So for the for the role player Um, we have that when there's no history, we play R1. Okay? So the very th that, that's what I'm saying. The first move, play R1. And then if the other player plays C1, then play R2. If the other player plays C2, also play R2. But if the other player plays C3... Uh, sorry, then also play R2. So in essence, this, this strategy is just the role player start by playing R1 and then play R, R2. Okay? Um, we're not writing down the histories for R2, C1. Sorry, the, the actions for R2, C1, R2, C2, and R2, C3. Only because um, this is something that the first player actually controls. So we're just not, not worrying about those. And then for the column player... We're going to say that, okay, the first move, so five five is given by C2. And then if the first player plays R1, play C3. And if the first player, uh, and then if the first player plays R2, then play C3. Now, this is a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful, but it is the mathematical representation of essentially saying that um, if uh, the, the, that both players start by playing R one and C one, so uh, R one and C two, pardon me. So start um, here, and as long as uh, the role player. Um, cooperates um, then the column player will play um, c3 right now um, the the way we can see this is we know that the last move has to end at a Nash equilibrium so we know the last move will end up here here or here here um, so we we can realize that essentially the row player has to play R2 in the second term, right? Which is what we have here. But the row player would really appreciate, um, sorry, but the, the column player would really appreciate getting this three in the first uh, stage. And so essentially the column player says, um, okay, let's give me that three in the first stage, but and then if, if you do give me that three in the first stage, if, you, if the role player indeed plays R1, then I will give you C3 in the second stage. It makes no difference to me, I get one either way, right? So the only reason that I wouldn't play this is to punish you for the first stage. And that gives the role player an opportunity to build up some reputation. Um, so we can verify, is this an Nash equilibrium? Is it an Nash equilibrium? Well, what's the utility? 
the utility of both players following this strategy uh, is 6-3 um, in the first round and 5-1 in, in the second uh, round. So 11-4 overall. Okay. If both players follow the strategy, then we'll get we'll get eleven four. Now, does either either player have a reason to deviate? Well, the row player has no reason to deviate in the second stage, but they might have a reason to deviate in the first. Indeed, if I know you're playing here, right? If I manage to convince you to play here, then may then I've got a choice between six and seven. So I'll take seven, and that'll increase my utility by one. Um, but as soon as I've done that, in the second stage, you'll play c1. So I'll increase by 1, but lose 4. I'll go from 5 to 1. So overall, I'd lose um, 3. So I've got no reason to deviate. Row player has no reason to deviate. So that's what we do. We'd go row player. And we would be able to just write down that um, if deviate in first round, Gain one, but lose four. So the row player has no reason to deviate. So given that the column player is playing this, the row player has no reason to do anything else but this. And we could just see, right? We could just see what happens if we if we change a, a variety of uh, of moves. And then if we look at the column player, um, if we look at the column player, well, the column player has no reason to deviate in the second stage because in the second stage we're, we're here, right? The row player is playing R2 and the column player has no reason to deviate from uh, either of, of these uh, two options depending on what the, the row player does. The only deviation the column player has to make is in the first um, stage. But remember, in the first stage, we're assuming the row player is playing R1, so then the column player has got a choice between 0, 3, and 1. So no reason to deviate. And so this strategy, where both players play something uh, not necessarily uh, an equilibria in the first round, so indeed R1 and C2. And now the reason we say it's not an equilibria is because essentially the, the column player trusts the row player here, right? The column player is going, all right, row player, give me this three, because the row player could just deviate to the second row and get... Um, and give the column player zero, right? And so this gives the row player the opportunity to build up a reputation that the column player rewards. And so this very simple uh, game and this simple set of strategies is a nice example um, of how reputation can be built and modeled mathematically using uh, game theory. And essentially, we get a cooperation emerge from complex dynamics. And the study of how cooperation emerges in complex dynamics is a huge field in game theory and the 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 topic of our next chapter